Hi, welcome back to Satoku Tech. Well, it appears I'm about one of 300 people that pitched in on Crowd Supply to help build this Pionora board by Diodes Delight. And I just got it in the mail. This is a new open source carrier board for the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. And it's in a form factor that's reminiscent of the Arduino more than the Raspberry Pi including analog to digital converter with six pins. Yeah, all of the compute module fours appear to be on back order, so if you want one, you should uh, put in for a back order. Look for the links in the description down below. Here's the dialsdelight.com Pianora docs. We're going to be installing this Pianora Raspberry Pi OS desktop image. They customized it to enable the analog to digital converter and of course enable USB. Let's open the box. Okay, there's a little bag with some rubber feet and a couple of screws. I don't know what those screws are for yet. Let's see. There's a cool sticker. And there's the board. So you got HDMI, USB-A, USB-C. Oh, there's a camera header there. And look at this. There's an M2 slot. You could mount an SSD here. That's what the two screws are for. Let's go ahead and crack out our Compute Module 4. You just want to orient it using the mounting screw holes and then pop it down on there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mount the rubber feet. The adhesive's very strong, so make sure you put this where you want it. I actually put it down and then wanted to move it, and it took a lot of effort to remove that rubber foot there. <laughs> so kudos to uh, Diodes Delight. That's a heck of an adhesive there. I'm just aligning them with the mounting holes. These rubber feet will help prevent the board from shorting out if it's powered because you see you've got electrical conductors on the bottom basically where the pins are soldered there. Wouldn't want to short this out. Okay, the feet are mounted. Let's take a close look here. Yeah, the RGB LEDs between the HDMI port and the USB-A port. The USB-C port can be used to power it. And you can also use it to boot up the eMMC memory on the Compute Module 4. There's a quick port, so you can attach quick devices right there. And there's the boot button. You need to hold that down when you're booting up to attach the eMMC. You want to make sure this switch is set to device. And that enables you to mount the eMMC on the Compute Module 4. Of course, if you have a Compute Module 4 light board, you can just use an SD card rather than trying to flash the eMMC. Because there isn't any on a light board. There's a programmable button on the back there next to the SD card slot. First, we need this RPI boot. We'll download that. This installs several BCM drivers, a 2708, 2710, and 2711 BCM driver. Takes a long time. We're going to crop and compress here. Okay, those three BCM 2700 drivers are installed. Now we're ready to boot up connecting the Compute Module 4 eMMC so we can flash the Raspberry Pi OS on here. Make sure that switch is set to device and hold down the boot button when you plug in your USB-C cable. There we go. And you can see the, BM, the BCM2711 device shows up in your devices. You run RPI boot. That mounts the eMMC as a volume that we can flash the Raspberry Pi OS image to. Ignore all these warnings here. You don't want to format the disk and I, I'm just going to ignore the device unrecognized warning here. So let's download the Pionora 
Raspberry Pi OS desktop image. This has several customizations like enabling the USB port, which is important. It also enables the analog to digital converter pins, etc. So you want to use this custom desktop rather than trying to do it yourself. We'll download that zip file. And we're also going to download the Raspberry Pi imager. Let's go ahead and install that right now. So in my last Raspberry Pi video, 02W Headless, a friend of the channel, Scott Knight, gave me this tip about Control-Shift-X in Raspberry Pi Imager that brings up a settings menu. Let's check it out. Yeah, here we go. We can enable SSH. We can set the password for Pi, the Pi user. We can configure our Wi-Fi, SSID, and password. Don't forget, you have to set the country code as well for Wi-Fi. There's my locale settings for time zone and keyboard layout. Let's go ahead and save this. Now we're ready to choose a custom OS and we find that Pianora Raspberry Pi zip that we just downloaded. All good, our Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 is mounted. Let's go ahead and write it. This is going to take some time. We're going to crop and compress. And again, ignore any warnings to format, etc. There we go, it's verified and now it ejects. And we're ready to boot up. So here you want to switch that USB from device to host so that I can plug in my dongle for my wireless keyboard with trackpad on it. There we go. I'm using the AGP Tech HD video capture device to do the screen capture on the Raspberry Pi. Got to finish hooking up a couple of cables here. There's the HDMI cable. These braided cables are really stiff, so I'm going to have to be struggling with this to get it to set right there. Yeah, give it a little twist. There we go. Okay, got that powered up. Oh, got to power up my video capture device there. And on the AGP tech, you have to have a signal present before you can press record successfully. So I'm just going to keep pressing record until there's a signal present and then it'll start recording. There we go. We're recording now. I got caught off guard here. So on the first boot, there's no wireless LAN interface. Silly me, I didn't even notice that when I bought this second compute module, I didn't get the one that includes wireless. But that's okay because I can use this compute module that doesn't have wireless on the I.O. board because the I.O. board has an Ethernet connection. So I'm going to have to swap that compute module out with the one I used in this previous video because this one has Wi-Fi on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, you got to be careful about that. And like I say, these compute modules are all on back order. So if you want to get your hands on one, you're going to have to put in on back order. Here we're booting up, resizing the volume. It boots through here a couple of times. There, the desktop's loading up. And you see in the upper right hand corner there, we have Wi-Fi and It's connected. All right. There we go. You can sort of think of this as the Arduino IDE is running on the board because you're going to be using Python most likely to program using all of the features of the Pianora and the Compute Module 4. So it's like the IDE is on the board and you're flashing it from the inside, whereas on a 
Arduino, you'd have your IDE running on a PC and you'd be flashing the board on the outside. So I hope you enjoyed learning about this Pianora board from Diodes Delight and checking out this Compute Module 4 running the Raspberry Pi OS that's customized for the Pianora. Give this video a like, leave a comment down below, and before you go on to watch more of my Raspberry Pi videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.